The ground in West Texas and specifically the county of Scurry continues to shake. Ken Molestina with an update today on the damage and also the concerns after nearly 100 quakes have been registered in that area since last week. In the past seven days, residents of the town of Snyder and across Scurry County have had 91 earthquakes so far, the biggest a 5.1 quake on Friday. A few of the smaller tremors registered on Monday. And that is from a 1.5 1, 1 and up on earthquakes, you know, some were small, some were the stronger ones. Jay Calloway is the emergency management coordinator for both Snyder and Scurry County, which are under a disaster declaration. The damage varies. Uh, everybody has a little bit of different damage, uh, cracked ceilings, cracked walls, some uh, mortar bricks, uh, separation. Uh, there are a few foundation cracks. While officials respond to the situation, geophysicists like SMU's Dr. Brian Stump are already looking into the activity. What about this do you think is worth continuing to talk about and ask questions? The first is, uh, can we understand if they are triggered earthquakes, how we've triggered them and so change practices so we don't. The second main point for experts is to plan for what might come next. To reduce the hazard and the risk in the future to future earthquakes. Dr. Stump says it's important to find out what caused the quakes in the first place. That even faults that haven't moved for a long time, if we perturb them, um, either by injecting fluids or changing the forces on those, sometimes we can trigger those, those events. Ken Molestina, CBS News, Texas. Did you feel it? Southern California shakes following a magnitude 4.9 earthquake felt from Los Angeles all the way to Las Vegas. The USGS says the earthquake hit at 1 p.m. with an epicenter roughly 13 miles northeast of Barstow in San Bernardino County. I did feel it. It was a little shift yeah. at my house, a little bit of noise. KTLA Shelby Nelson now joining us live at UC Riverside with more on today's quake. Shelby? That's right, and right when it happened, we were seeing those preliminary reports coming out about how large this quake was. A lot of people buzzing on X saying where they felt it. Some people even as far as Vegas, but experts say that they believe this happened on the Calico Fault, which crosses over through the Mojave Desert. Now let's take a look at some of this video that came into our newsroom. A little bit of shaking you see there on those surveillance cameras at Barstow Station Liquor. Uh, a water bottle falls off the shelf. Luckily, not much damage. This rattling wasn't too bad, but the quake was recorded as a magnitude 4.9 with a depth of just under five miles. Now let's show you a map that gives you an idea of where the epicenter of this quake was. The U.S. Geological Survey says it happened at 1 p.m., roughly 13 miles northeast of Barstow in San Bernardino County. It was first recorded as a magnitude 5.1, but quickly downgraded from that. Scientists looked at similar events with a magnitude 4 and greater within about a six mile span of there. They say they've had 22 similar incidents since 1932, the largest being a magnitude 5.3 quake in 97. Now we just had the chance to speak to UC Riverside professor of seismology, Gareth Funning, who weighed in on what this could mean. It's not a very big earthquake in the grand scheme of things. Uh, it's around magnitude five. Um, so it will be felt regionally, but it won't cause much damage regionally. Um, one thing we should be careful of is to dismiss the, the possibility that there could be a larger one to follow. Uh, about one in 10 times, we have an earthquake of that size that's followed by a larger one. And that's exactly what happened in Kern County with the Ridgecrest earthquake of 2019. Professor Funning says this is a good reminder. It's a kind of a, a wake up call in a way that, or a reminder that we live in, in earthquake country and we really ought to be taking measures to prepare for earthquakes. And that, of course, always means to have water, food for several days in advance, just in case an emergency situation were to happen, you are prepared and have medical documents, anything that you're going to need uh, in case of an emergency. That's the very latest from Riverside. I'm Shelby Nelson, KTLA 5 News. While soldiers in armored vehicles patrolled the streets, helicopters kept a watch from the skies over major cities in Bangladesh. In the last few days, peace has been ravaged as violent clashes between protesters and the security services across many cities in the country. The government has imposed a nationwide curfew, restricted movement and a shoot to kill order 
for those who disturb the peace. They're firing openly. Three of my fellow protesters are already dead. A bullet hit the head of another and I just brought him here. There are blood stains on my hand. Why are my hands coloured with the blood of my brothers? Even as soldiers lay razor wire and give warnings, the defiance is still there. Protesters hold their ground and are unwilling to relent. There is no scope of retreat unless it involves the stopping of harassment. Look, there are many martyrs. Many were killed. People are being killed like birds. People are killed after torture. They are killed with sponsorship by the government as they took part in our quota reform movement. So the state should take the responsibility. The students are protesting the discriminatory 30% quota in government jobs to be reserved for families of those who fought in the country's independence. Almost a fifth of the population is unemployed and the coveted government jobs are in high demand. The violent clashes has led to the death of over 130 people, while thousands have been injured, some critical. Schools and colleges have been shut and roads and highways blocked, crippling much of the nation. So far, these have been the biggest challenge to Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's rule since she won her fourth term this year, in an election that was boycotted by the opposition. In a ruling on Sunday, the Supreme Court scaled back the reservations, which may help restore some peace and normalcy. Never Lazarus, Sky News. That's happening in our day will continue happening because we kept silence. Somebody said that the world will not be destroyed by those who do evil, but it will be destroyed by the good people who look on and do nothing. Quiero uno, uno que sea serio y que diga la verdad, pana, que sea serio y que diga la verdad. Ellos cayeron y están claros, hermano, están claros que cayeron. Por eso es que estamos en la pista, porque estamos claros que ganamos, está claro. Porque ya, porque estamos cansados. Tengo 23 años viviendo el mismo gobierno y ha sido siempre lo mismo. Mierda, con más mierda, pues seguir se revolviendo la mierda, ¿no? Ya basta, yo quiero un futuro para mi hija, yo no, puedo, no he podido estudiar. Salí del bachillerato y no pude irme para la universidad porque me tocó trabajar. La lucha de uno vale por la libertad de muchos. Me emociona mucho decirles a todos 
que tenemos el 73.20% de las actas. Y que con este resultado, presidente electo es Edmundo González Urrutia. Washington to protest the Prime Minister's address and demand an end to the war in Gaza. Matt Guppen was there. Tonight, as Israel's Prime Minister was addressing Congress, just blocks away, clashes erupting between some pro-Palestinian protesters and the police. Right now, these protesters are trying to break through this line of police. There was shoving, projectiles were thrown, and Capitol Police deployed pepper spray, saying protesters failed to obey police orders to retreat. It had started peacefully, thousands thronging the Capitol Hill area, demanding an end to the war in Gaza and Benjamin Netanyahu's arrest. Blocking their route to the Capitol where Netanyahu was speaking were miles of barricades backed by thousands of officers, including SWAT teams. The march stalling at Union Station where protesters began pulling American flags down from the flagpoles. Officers moved in and were swarmed by the crowd. The flag there on the ground was on the flagpole here at Union Station a few moments ago, but protesters here lit it on fire as well as that effigy of Benjamin Netanyahu. Police eventually removing the Palestinian flags raised above Union Station. And David, before leaving protesters to face that bell behind me and that memorial, and you might see a few of them left behind here. But for the most part of the day, they marched demanding an end to the war in Gaza, an end to the blockade and the arrest of Israel's Prime Minister Netanyahu. David, back up and our thanks to you. Like, I feel like unsafe to stay in South Port, really. Before, uh, before I just like feel okay because it's quiet area and I never seen in South Put happen. And now I'm just thinking about future what's gonna be happen. So yeah. uh, you know, so it's gonna be the situation now for make us create this very big issue now maybe. There was a riot um, outside and it was a sea of just people all dressed in like, you know, not not like the normal Southport community because I don't think any of them were from the Southport community. This is an organised, um, like, if you like, gang of people who have come down just purely to um, cause hate and, and just anger. And the entire community that actually live in Southport are so angry and frustrated because it's it's kind of like, you know, it's not about this, it's about what happened to these kids, which is devastating. There was, from my house, you could see the smoke. We thought initially that a building had been set on fire, but it was a police van. I heard it was a police van. You could hear shouting. You could hear rubble being thrown, windows smashing. It was really scary, really scary. 